Hey everybody, it's Matt McCord, and today I'm going to tell you about some funny stuff that's happened to me and stuff that I've done, and uh, well, it's story time with Dr. Mastermind. And uh, well, let's start with the celebrity knockdowns. Celebrity knockdowns is, I have a, I have, I have a couple of celebrity knockdowns. <laughs> the first one was in 1982 after a Saxon and Cheap Trick show at the uh, Paramount in Portland. And uh, it was at Louis LaBamba's club, Tony DiMicoli's club. That's uh, the place where we took our first uh, wild dogs pictures with Dean and uh, with Jamie also. And, uh, well, Cheap Trick was going to come down to the, to the club and party after the show. I was in the bathroom, as usual, because I, I love to pee. And somebody came in and said, hey, Matt, they're here. And I said, oh, my God. So I kept going, <laughs> finished and zipped up and ran out the door. And as I ran out the door, lead singer of Cheap Trick, Robin Zander, was coming into the bathroom because he had to go. And I, boom, I knocked his ass clear against the wall, practically, because he's a little guy, <laughs> and I'm really not that little. And uh, I said, oh, I'm so, oh, wow, you're the dude, which is my standard line <laughs> when I do things like that. And I said, I'm so sorry, because, oh, it happens all the time when you're this sort. And he was a real tiny guy, so uh, I said, it's all yours. <laughs> I helped him up, and... Tried to avoid him the rest of the night so uh, <laughs> he wouldn't sick his bodyguards on me. But he was a really nice guy about that. The other celebrity knockdown is a little higher class. It's a, a couple of steps above. In 1993, our manager, Ken Mendick, for Wild Dogs, well, he wasn't my manager at the time, but I'm the guy who originally had met him uh, by placing flyers out at a show at the Stone in San Francisco. And that's the guy who contacted me, and I was the main contact until the Wild Dogs had a meeting with him and said, this is our new singer. And I said, well, I guess uh, we're all done here. But uh, I was going down to, to see Ken Mendick, who was running the lights for Robert Plant, the Led Zeppelin singer, in case you don't know who that is. And... I was coming across the stage. They said, well, go down across the stage and down the stairs. Stages have curtains, like at the Paramount. Real theaters have wing curtains. And Robert Plant happened to be behind one of those, unbeknownst to me. And like a bull in a china closet, boom, I flipped the curtain back. I hit him and the woman he was with, and they both went down. And I helped both of them up, and as I was helping... Him up, I said, oh, oh, wow, you're the dude. <laughs> and, uh, and I helped him up. I had to help the oh, gorgeous woman. I helped the, other, the woman up, and then I helped Robert Plant up. And as he stood up, he was, I said, you're a lot taller than on TV, Mr. P. And that is a line from a movie that Peter Sellers is in called Being There, about Chauncey Gardner, who kind of was everywhere. He was a gardener. But, and Robert Plant said, I love that movie. So are you a goon fan? I didn't know what the goons was. I just said yes. Later on, I found out that the goon show was the pre, the, the bunch before Monty Python. That's where Monty Python was, uh, got inspired. And that's where all the Beatles humor seemed to come from. I said, I'm so sorry about this. And uh, he goes, that's okay. Uh, I go, I'm on my way to go see Ken Mendick. I said, don't hold that against him. <laughs> in fact hold her against you it seemed like a much better deal <laughs> and he started laughing really good and shook my hand and uh, that was really cool man <laughs> you meet the best people just crashing into them and uh, another thing that happened at the Paramount that same year uh, before this actually I was at a Robin Trower show, and Jessica Gatsman, who worked for Double T, was there, and uh, Robin Trower was a little bit boring, and I'd already seen it the night before in Salem, and it wasn't very loud, and uh, Jessica said, I gotta go, I gotta go do the count out at George Clinton. I said, George Clinton? Like Funkadelic, George Clinton? Yeah. I said, oh man, I'd rather be there. And she said, okay, give me 15 minutes to get there, and your name will be at the door. So, I said, Okay, and I took my chance and went up to the Paramount. I was at the Roseland. And I uh, went up to the Paramount, which is a schnitzer then. And uh, I said, hi, my name's Matt McCord. Hello, Mr. McCord, the guy at the back door. It was like a butler. And he goes, oh, yes, they're waiting for you. And so I said, wow. And they escorted me and Buko in. And uh, I don't know if Buko got a picture of this. I don't think so. Uh, 
<laughs> but we uh, were the only white people backstage, and they had about 50 people backstage having a party with a bar and everything. And uh, George Clinton looked at me and came strolling over when there was an instrumental break, hugged me, brought me on stage. The guy in the diapers came out, and they both walked me onto the stage in the middle of the stage. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here, let's do it. And they start dancing. And people are cheering. I mean, the place is packed. And I'm looking out and thinking, wow, I've always wanted to be on stage with this place filled with people. And uh, I, uh, I'm looking out at the audience and, you know, dancing and then going around to everybody. I was out there for quite a while. I mean, there was a long song. And as the song started, uh, was going to end, George gave me the big hair, big hair, bear hug again and walked me over to the side where we were standing before, except he walked back to the bar and they cut a swath like <laughs> Moses crossing the, you know, opening the sea and explained to the bartender in some sign language, anything he wants and uh, he's, he's just ordered. So I ordered a bunch of <laughs> booze <laughs> and uh, the party continued. And uh, later on at the end, he came and shook my hand and it was amazing. I was like, God, I mean, George Clinton and Funkadelic is one of my all-time favorite bands. And uh, I just was happy as hell, man. And uh, there was no celebrity knockdown. That was a semi-celebrity knockout. But uh, that's, some, that's one of my uh, funny stories. <laughs>